We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And to join me on the G-Spot, that is Guest Spotlight, for today's episode, we have Connor Morgan. All right, Connor Morgan is a phenomenal woman, my dearest friend, but also a sports nutritionist, founder of Bare Root Remedy, and published author, if only you knew. All right, all these accolades and accomplishments. <laughs> yes! Finger snaps. Come on now. Okay, I am so, so, so happy for you just in everything and I you know I I applaud all my friends because we're all doing big things but more importantly like you set your eye on the prize and the prize you shall manifest like you're really incredible with that so super Mm -hmm. grateful to have you on the show so you've been on an episode of the spicy life like back back uh, yeah. back in the day and now we're in different positions in life right where you get to now come on uh, at a different place and share a little bit of your knowledge educate us on what you're going through so today's episode is this is not the life i imagined all right that is cliff <laughs> what are we talking about y'all Woo! <laughs> where this do is, we start this is not the life i imagined and yeah. i feel yeah. like a lot of people can relate to that being uh in their 30s and having this like crazy moment of like I'm making you know strides in this area but there's mm-hmm. certain areas that I'm lacking and we're going to talk about that in just a sec yeah but first you have to share with us like everybody else on the show when you first fall in love with yourself when did that moment happen when did you first fall in love with yourself I would say probably I think it was six 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 years ago I'm like my time frame since COVID is messed up. <laughs> I would say six years ago, um, I got out of a really, really bad relationship. And looking back, I realized being in that relationship and what I was tolerating, mm. I didn't love myself. And so it took having to get through that yeah. to nurture myself back to who I am, loving myself more than I ever did before. And like really saying like, are you crazy? Like, there's no way the Connor who loves herself now would have ever tolerated that. Back what then. does loving yourself look like? So, like, to get back to yourself, yeah. what were some of the steps that you took to find yourself again? Okay. I I don't know if other people, if y'all are like this or not, but I like to go ghost and kind of isolate myself, but it's to protect people around me. And also, that's how I know to get Connor back in mm-hmm. the right space. So I went ghost for like a year. I fell off the face of the planet. Like I didn't have Instagram. I deleted everything. I'm like, I'm really going to use this time. I remember this time. You yeah. followed me. Yeah. And <laughs> What is my friend doing? I thought that was so, I was like, where did you go? I literally, my, but my whole page got, I was, I deleted it. I was like, I can't have any sort of distractions. I don't want to know what anyone is up to. This is about Connor and Connor and Connor and Connor and Connor. So I deleted Instagram. I traveled. I traveled without posting it. Mm. Do you even know what that's like in this day and age? I like, can't even travel- imagine for you because I feel I like know. I travel all the time because I get yeah. to live through your page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. I traveled without posting. I cried. I went to public spaces and like parks and just outside in nature and just cried. Mm. And I just felt like one with nature. Um, I got back into Bible study. Mm. I got heavy into church. I changed my phone number. Mm. I went the hardest I've ever went in the gym. And I'm like, this is my goal. This is what I'm going to get to. And it was, it wasn't about looking a certain way, like body image. It was more so for my mind Mm. because the gym helps me mentally. Um, And yeah, it was really just about me during that time. It was a very selfish period, but a period that I needed in order to bring me back to my best self. That's crazy because I feel like uh, a lot of people will go ghost and and isolate themselves, but not do anything in the interim for the healing process. And so I love that you're like, oh, well, let me tell you these 10 things that I did uh, to find myself again. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't easy though. I'm going to be honest. The first, I would say like two months, it was... Like my mom having to be like, okay, Connor, did you Mm -hmm. eat today? Like get up and do something. Like it was, I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, it was pathetic, but heartbreak and real love will do that to you. Oh, for sure. You know? So it didn't start off that way. But once I realized, okay, I'm either, if I want something to change, I got to change it. Or I'm going to be in this period of my mom is having to ask her at that time. I, I don't even know how old I was, almost 30 in my late 20s. Her daughter, did you eat today? Like, mm-hmm. girl, 
Let's go. Get it together. Like, I just saw you eat a whole plate of uh, <laughs> Greek food right now. I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen you eat like I that eat, before. Uh, like, people do not think I eat <laughs> like that because I have abs. Baby, I eat six times a day. Y'all got to eat. No, you're a foodie. You're a yeah. foodie. You're always introducing me to like new spas and yes, new dishes I and love stuff food. like that. Yeah, yes. you're definitely a foodie. Yeah. But I was just like, yeah, we're eating meat again. Like, yeah. And you're doing, okay. 10%, so, only 10% of the oh. time. 90% plant-based and 10% I go off of my blood type. Is that a secret? Did I reveal a secret? You did. And that's okay. (laughs) Y'all just, it's it's okay. It's okay. I talk about it to like my close friends, but yeah, 10% I eat what my blood type says. Okay. Cause you need that for nourishment. I need that to feel, yeah, I listen to my body. I'm not going to go off of just, I listen to what I feel like my body needs. I just remember it being very hard to go to restaurants with you. I was the picky. (laughs) Look, what does this, every order, excuse me, what does this have in it? Oh my God. It was so hard. It was so hard. I can't do pistachios. Yeah. I can't do cheese. I can't do, I can't do more than five almonds. Remember you can't, you were around when I was competing y'all. Oh my God. Yeah. That was rough. I was like, I'm not competing. I'm eating. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And I'm eating five almonds as a snack. So um, I I, I love that you're being honest with us. So thank you for sharing. Yes. You're going to go um, dig in deep with me right now. We're going to dive into some words that you said that I felt like was really important that we had this episode for. So uh, this is not the life that I imagined, Mm -hmm. right? That was what you responded to me when I congratulated you on buying a new home, Mm -hmm. on becoming a homeowner. Yeah. Where did that response come from? Let me preface this with... Go ahead. I want you to back it on up. (laughs) Listen, y'all. I, in particular, on podcasts, I go on because I feel like... I'm a talker, so I can I'll talk. Cut you and off I'm gonna, you go too long. Yeah, in that part, <laughs> that part. But I also feel like you know, certain people. Oh, do they know who I dated last? This and that. Yeah. And people pry into information, mm-hmm. so I'm very particular. But because you're my sis, I'm like, we gonna go and be comfortable and share. Yes. So, in answering that question, I would say. This isn't the life I imagined because when I look back at when I was 16, 17, 18, going to college, like all I knew, because in my family, it was you go to college, you get a nine to five, a good nine to five, you excel in that nine to five, you climb the career ladder, you get married and you have kids, Mm -hmm. you buy a house. All of that is, is with a spouse and with kids and with, and my mom had kids when she was 28, 29, Mm -hmm. I'm 33. So when I look at my life, am I proud of myself? Are you crazy? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course I'm proud of myself. But I never thought I'd be buying my first home without my husband. Mm -hmm. Not a spouse, my husband. Um, I never thought I'd be moving into my first home, a four-bedroom home, a single woman. You know, I thought the rooms would be filled with kids because that is what I saw in my family. That's what I saw with my parents. And I didn't think I'd be doing it by myself and it's tough it's hard it is so much harder than what I thought okay. it's a challenge and mm-hmm. I wish there's some days when like my contractor's calling about we need a forklift to get a 800 pound garage door off of the truck and I'm like I don't have a forklift I wish I could call <laughs> my husband and say babe I need help you like I need help I don't want to do it all on my own yeah but, you know I'm in that position so Okay, so I think I feel like that's fair, you guys. As you're listening, um, I want you to think like, do I sometimes sound like this, right? Like when you're thinking, when you're listening to Connor speak, does sometimes this remind you of yourself, right? Some of the things that you should be celebrating. Do you ever sometimes speak negatively to self about yeah. that thing that you should be? Right. celebrating and jumping for joy, right? Right. The moment that, and my husband we will tell, even will tell you, I talk about my weight all the time. The mm. moment that someone tells me, you look good, girl, you lost the baby weight. Congratulations to your snapback. Yeah. I'm like, this isn't a snapback. It took me a whole year to lose yeah. 50 pounds. And I don't even dwell in the moment of like, I'm so happy that I did it. Thank you so much. Like, it sounds almost as if I'm ungrateful. Yeah. Absolutely. But there's this need, right, to excuse or even like give yourself sometimes permission to be proud of yourself or happy mm. when you're used to for so long working so hard to get to a certain place. Yeah. And you kind of want people to know like this wasn't easy. Like understand that there's there was work involved, right? Like yeah. home ownership, it took you a while. It took me a while. And I started looking right before COVID happened. So it was one of those, like, I went through the 
period of, oh my gosh, the world, no one knew what was happening. And then, you know, the market got bad. And then like, there were so many factors, you know, and I stopped flying during that time and I started Beirut on my own. So it was like, I didn't have that income coming in. There were all these obstacles. It was a lot. It was so much. But you did it. I did it. I I want to make it a safe place and give you permission to uh, not be hard on yourself because I feel like that was a response to mm-hmm. you being hard on yourself, but it truly wasn't what you imagined. You're like, yeah. I had these expectations and I didn't fulfill like every checkbox yeah. of expectation. Yeah. Partnership was one of them. Yeah. And the reason yeah. why I feel like that is so important for us to talk about is because as a society, even from our family, our upbringing, the mm-hmm. culture, uh, the media, everybody puts it on us that we should have X, Y, Z, family, house, kids by, by a certain, certain age. Point. Yeah. And, and it's hard, especially when I look around and literally almost all of my friends, like I don't, all of my friends, I think there's like one that I can name that isn't, doesn't have kids mm-hmm. or isn't married. And it's like, this is not what I imagined yeah. at all, yeah. you know, like at, and, and that's, at all. That's okay. I think that especially for, um, our demographic, right? And when yeah. I say that, I'm speaking about um, black women mm. uh, being the fastest growing when it comes to education, mm-hmm. um, when it comes to strides that we're making in income. And then when it comes also to um, relationships, it's suffering because there is a disproportionate yep. amount of men within the black culture that are meeting the same standards at the yeah. same pace. Yep. Um, and we can get, that's a whole nother episode if we get into like the prison system and what is it, you know, yeah. done to the black family, but you see a crazy amount of black women who are killing it right now, killing right? It. Oh, Just like I you, they are, they are, we, we are getting the bag. Yeah. But then you also look to the left and you don't see the partner. And then we are made to feel shame around that. Yes. We are made to feel guilt around not having that companion. Yeah. Um, I would speak to your Italian side, but I don't know much about what's going on. <laughs> Um, for the Italians, I can't speak to my Latino side. <laughs> right, right. Um, and I can speak to the fact that also for because uh, I got to talk about my black and browns. Um, the within the Latino population, uh, Latinas are hitting second when it comes to children out of wedlock not getting married as well. Mm. Um, so right, right behind the numbers, right. So it's crazy that just black and brown in general are experiencing this more than ever before. It's the highest right. it has ever been for mm. unmarried women. Wow. And, and 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 when it comes to the highest education, but yet no partner yeah. by your side. That can be very hard, especially if you're comparing yourself right. to other people. And I'm people. like, hold on one second. Is this something that we're celebrating or how, you know what I'm saying? Because- we're saying it in a way as almost if it's something to be proud of. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's also something, and again, I, I could catch some slack for this, but that's something that we, I'm speaking, I'm not going to speak for your Latino. Okay, thank <laughs> I'm gonna you. I'm going to speak for <laughs> black people, but we're so, I don't need a man. I'm proud to be, I'm not in that. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not saying that. I am not a, I don't need a man type girl. Mm-hmm. I absolutely see the value in one and I need one and good, I can't good. wait for that. And I express that and talk to God about that all the time. I'm not a, I don't need a man type girl. Never been that way. It's just, that's not it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like because that's such a huge sector now of, mm-hmm. well, at least I'm excelling in my career and I'm here and I'm, and I'm proud and I'm, and I'm single and I don't, some of us get grouped into that yep. when that's not the case. And baby, that ain't me. So, like, I'm not saying it's something to not celebrate. That's great. If you feel like you don't need a man, cool. Good for you. I'm not in that category. Like, so, what I am going to do with you is something that I've done before, but we're going to do ah, it for the show. I'm scared. Um, you, <laughs> An exercise. Yep. You're gonna, Here we go. Y- it's more of a quick qu- question okay, okay. Um, that the audience can ask themselves, too, while they're going through okay, it. Okay, cool. Um, if you were to score your level of satisfaction okay. on a scale of one to 10, okay. when it comes to your health, mm. what would you score it? My health, I'm going to say, and 10 is the highest. Yep, 10's I'm going to say nine and nine. Okay. When it comes to the level of satisfaction, what would you score your career? I would say there's definitely, I'm not exactly where I want to be, but I'm proud of where I am. I'm going to say an eight. Okay. When it comes to your relationship with friends on a scale of one to 10? 
I have amazing girlfriends in our relationship. I'm going to give that a 9.5. Ooh, yeah, yes. I am blessed with the women I have in my life. I love it. Relationships with family. Scale of 1 to 10. That is something that was on my vision board this year that I want to be better at. Um, and just being a better daughter, a better sister. Um, I'm going to give that a 6 and a half. Okay. And when it comes to your love life, Scala, once again. <laughs> like, do I have one or like, what is the... On a scale of one to 10, what would you scale? My love, love life? life? I'm going to give it a negative five. Okay. <laughs> a negative five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm being dead ass. I, I 100% wholeheartedly believe yeah. you. Okay. If you guys are listening, ask yourself the same thing. What would you scale these areas in your life, right? When it comes to happiness or satisfaction, what would you scale it? So uh, Connor just shared with us areas where she believes to be maybe thriving mm -hmm. and then the areas where you're not. Yeah. I am a huge believer and the way that I work with my clients is around understanding based on the numbers that you gave mm -hmm. that where you score the highest is where you put majority of your energy, mm. your resources, mm. your time, mm. uh, your insight, your spiritual gifts, uh, your skill set, you season, you educate, you mm. um, pour into that area where you are thriving, right? And you okay. said uh, career, health, yeah. um, friends, that lets me know, okay, you are pouring, pouring, pouring into yeah. these things. Yeah. When we scale something and score it low, it's usually because one, we're not doing that well in that yeah. area and we don't have what we want and we're not at where we want, but then we're also not investing as much energy there as well. You are correct. Because we're not reaping that the many benefits. benefits. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. So it becomes right. negligent to us. Yeah. It gets ignored. Yeah. So if you had to tell me right now why you truly believe <laughs> that you are single, what would that reason be? I believe I'm single because. I feel like you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're going to share it with us. I am single because I don't leave the house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a homebody. And it's crazy because I feel like when you met me, y'all, and I know Maddie is married, but I'm going to share something with y'all because this is really my longest friend that I've had in L.A., we were out here ripping and running. And I don't mean it like that, okay? Nothing to her husband. I mean, like, we were- I was in the streets. <laughs> she was in the streets. Okay, she said it, not me. I'm joking, I'm No, joking. no, no. But we were social. Like, it was always, we were at a always birthday out. party. We were on a yacht party. We were here. We were going to Miami for the weekend. Yep. We were doing this. We were doing that. As we grow and get older, it was like, okay, people start settling down. And also, I feel like what happened with COVID, like- I am, if you know me, I am the one cracking jokes. I'm laughing. I'm the life of the party with my circle. But now I feel like I am very introverted. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when COVID happened and when I was kind of forced to be an extroverted introvert, mm -hmm. like in the house and, you know, find pleasure and spending time with myself, like now I just, it takes, it's pulling teeth to get me to leave my house. I don't enjoy it. So now it's like, I have a long day. My day was great with work, whatever, workout. I don't feel like going to somewhere to meet somebody. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel like it. I'm tired. Okay. I'm tired. I don't have the energy anymore. I'm not a young tenderoni. You okay. Still I'm still young. a tenderoni. But <laughs> Okay, um, I, I hope y'all yeah. are listening to the words that Listen are coming out I'm of this saying. woman's mouth, okay? She's <laughs> she's telling y'all, I'm not young. I don't feel like going. I just don't feel like leaving the house. I'm comfortable at home. So now that is, that's why I feel like I'm single. I don't put in the energy when to go out and meet people. That's where I fail now. Okay. So what would you say is the reason? What were you going to say? Because you know me. Uh, so I have multiple reasons for you. Okay. Um, Ooh, what, multiple, multiple, girl. Okay. Um, in addition to your isolation. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's true. It's terrible. Very much. It's not good. Um, yes, because you are the one person I know that is like, nope. I'm in the house. I'm not trying I'm to go in, out. Yeah, I'm in the house. That's it. In addition to your isolation, I think that the other thing that adds to it is your time spent dedicating to mm. men who do not have Ooh, the same to get into relationship it. goals as you. 
let's talk about it, emotionally unavailable men. And because we spend so much time in that space, yeah. um, I don't want to call it wasted time, but I'm not going to call it valuable time that has we can use those experiences yeah. to um, learn from and to, you know, take us to the next place in our life. Yeah. But when you are spending too much time somewhere yeah. with someone, you are potentially missing out on other yep. opportunities that could be coming into your life. Other beautiful blessings. And that's not For to sure. say you guys that you're going to miss out on all blessings, Yeah, but there is a window of blessings that you miss out on when you are distracted with things that do not serve you. People who Ooh. do not love you the way that you deserve. Yeah. So that's the other reason. Thousand percent. Okay. You hit the nail on the head. And the third <laughs> reason is as ambitious as you are, the most go-getting go-getters of the get is going, the going is good, <laughs> um, you will not mm. actively and consistently even approach or pursue or profess interest in what you desire. That's a lie. Because you recently, remember, recently started you, doing that. Yes. But that's because I've been in your that's head. That's because you taught me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but we're speaking but like we're speaking, the last 30 years that I didn't get like to. But let's talk about it. Let's go back in time. I know women, we are taught. Absolutely. Men are the wolves. They're the chasers. Sure. They the are. Hunters, they go after what they want. The They're hunters. Yep. So why as a woman would I ever chase a man? Are you crazy? And <laughs> let's change our like, language. Let's change our language. Okay. So you're using the language of chase. Yes. All I said was go after. Go after you're a go getter, right? What I mean by that, and let me give more context. I do not mean you, hey amen, hey amen. You know, you looking good over there. Let me <laughs> holla at you real quick, Shouty. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying, um, hey sir, can I take you out at 7 p.m. to Maestro's? Woo. I am saying if you see interest in someone who you maybe are attracted to or desire, or maybe you like the resume, the old you would not introduce yourself and smile and make eye contact and go mm. up to them mm. and say, you know what? I like your style. We should be friends. You would not do that. Not if you were interested in them. If there was no interest, you're friendly as fuck. But if there's interest, you would not allow proximity of space to close. You would not express mm. interest. Mm. And I think that a lot of women are trained, right? Because yeah. and let me not even say trained. We are told because okay. training is different. Training means that like someone um, shaped you and guided you and taught you. A lot of us have not been taught. Okay. So I'm going to say that um, society has uh, vo uh, reiterated over and over and over that men should only approach. And if they want you, they will come for you. Right. Okay. But that has not served you in <laughs> Any areas of your life, let alone love life. Tell me, did Bear Root fall on your lap or did you have to put an effort towards that? Did your book fall on your lap or did you actually have to take time and nurture that? Did uh, right. your body just fall on your lap or did you my actually body have fell to on my lap. hit the gym? No, it did. <laughs> You're right, it didn't. I knew you when you didn't even eat clean. Rem remember? <laughs> Y'all, we were. I knew it early 20s. It was like we were eating whatever we wanted, yeah. stuff in our faces. Yeah. You have had You're right. to. I put grow an effort. In you, every you know what? Area. I'm going to give that to you because I really can't sit here and lie to you. Like I might be able to do somebody else because you really know me. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and be honest and say you are absolutely right. You are right. Thank I you. do not express interest because I just feel like if a man liked me, he would tell me, or if he wanted to, you know, express whatever he would so why should i have to okay that's just what went through my what goes through my head okay if i'm being honest yeah if we <clears throat> what has been taught to us um which is a little bit uh antiquated i know this is going to be hard for you guys to wrap your head around if you haven't studied um energy appropriately is that what's been taught to us is if you're operating in your feminine energy that masculine energy male should be the one approaching you yes However, for our listeners, not everybody, one, belongs with masculine energy male. Some of you guys belong with um, feminine energy leading male. Um, and I say this because not all of you guys are willing to sit in your feminine in order to uh, shift the dynamic for polarity to happen. But that's a whole nother episode. Um, so there's so, so there's that. OK, yeah. the other element is um, when you leave the power for the man to decide who he mm -hmm. wants, um, 
you are lessening the likeliness of you being satisfied with the options that you are getting. Mm. If we leave all of the power for the man to decide who he wants, um, and he's not someone who is paying attention or he's, you know, distracted, or maybe he, you know, uh, I'm not going to say intimidated, but maybe he, uh, sees other men approaching you and he's like, oh, no, I'm good. I already know her type. Like he could be yeah, making it. Why do men think assessment. like that? That's a whole Men like thing. to win. Yes. And if it doesn't look like, uh, They're you're someone win. that he can conquer or that he feels like even having the energy to tackle, or maybe he just had a bad day that day and he doesn't feel like hollering at anybody. Maybe he's introverted. And COVID put him like you, extroverted now and introverted. Yeah. And he's like, man, I'm tired of like all these women in LA. Like, what if he's using the same language yeah, as you? You're right. So you're right. there's all these like areas that could be happening when we think of like, if he wants me, he has to come up to me. And I say this because as someone who didn't like my husband, <laughs> And then, like, and when we first met, and then winds up seeing him again oh, at a fire party and yeah. being like, like, I don't remember you looking mm -hmm. that delicious. Me going up to him and being like, hey, I'm spicy. Da -da -da. He's like, I remember you. I was like, oh, you did? Give me a hug then. I'm the one wow. who approached him. He did not approach me. Wow. And But that's very fitting for you, though. Because uh, you got to know. I remember, like, that's fitting. You're just, that's just you, though. And, You're so... I get that. You know? I get that. Not everybody is uh, maybe as personable or maybe even aggressive, if you want to call it that. That's what I'm looking for, aggressive. And I don't mean that in a negative Absolutely. No, at it, all. It, it works for me. That is my dynamic, yes. okay? Yes. Just, I, I think I even came up to you to be my friend. She uh, did. <laughs> oh, my God, you did. She, You literally came up to me at the club. I don't even remember who I was with. And you were like, oh, my God, you're so pretty. We should be friends. I hollered at you. <laughs> you did. <laughs> See, that's what ass. I'm saying. That's, that's what a 20 year old will that's do. That's what I'm saying. Your that's young you. And dumb. That's always been Maricela. <laughs> Spicy Madi. That's been you. That sounds about right. Yeah. Now, though, I'm, I'm happy that I get to see all the beautiful facets. And there's more prerequisites now than um, that when it comes yes. to being my friend. <laughs> Jesus. It makes sense but, now. But the relationships that you're able to gain from right. speaking, right? Because if that's not your personality, someone has to do it, I okay? Know. What if your husband is more introverted? No, then he's not my husband. It just, when he, my husband wouldn't be introverted. You had like, it's just not it. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. God, is he? Speak to me. Give me a sign right now. Well, so now you're gonna make me talk about introvert, um, introverts because you're saying that you, that your husband is extroverted. Yeah, because he obviously has to approach me. And come. <laughs> I'm trying he has to, to come get me. About, I, I'm trying to convince you about the uh, who speaks first rule, okay? <sighs> the who speaks first rule does not determine the dynamic of the entire relationship. Okay. And that's the that's just what I want to hit home on. The who okay. speaks first rule. Okay. Now, him asking you out, all of those things, yes. I think that that courtship process should happen. I do think that for him to sit in his masculine energy, he should be leading with um, pursuing you. I think that yeah. you should be the person pursuing. Yeah. Okay. I'm a firm believer of that. But when it comes to letting it be known that there is interest or intrigue or welcome, here I am. I should is, be able to do that. That is very feminine. And you know, I, you know I'm, I'm okay with that. I could do that. But I'm not in any spaces to where that's even happening because and I'm at home. And that's the other problem. That's that the you other problem. are ex yes. excluding yourself yeah. from the human species. So <laughs> <laughs> literally, no, literally, Madi. Literally, yeah. And so there's so there's a, an array of things. There's going an array on. of things going on. So when I hear you say things like, "Okay, well, this is not how I imagined it," yeah, then I have to look at, okay, well, what are Connor's behaviors that For have sure. created alignment to even take place? Yep. Okay. Thousand percent. Now your friends can kick in all they want and we can all like try to set you up. We can, you know, I can mm -hmm. try to force you to slide into someone's DM. Which I did um, when I was in your program and look where that went. We're not going to talk about that. It didn't work out. But it didn't work out you because did something I, you have never done before. I like know. let's just take it for that win. Okay. Right. So while Man, that was we are we while we make an effort or we, you know, we may put ourselves out there or try, it's <clears> that Maybe what you felt like rejection even. Let's just like yeah. take that little sting. It's because you haven't conditioned that muscle. And what I mean by that is if 
you couldn't get a product, a product to market because of whatever, let's just say COVID happens mm -hmm. and they didn't have bottles for bare root. You wouldn't just give up on your dream of bare root. Right. You would I'd be like, I'm going to find a, a different bottle that serves yeah. or a different company that can um, fulfill this order request in time so I can get to market. Right. But when it comes to our love life, we experience a no or we don't have the best experience and we're like, oh, I am done. I am never going to try this stepping outside of my comfort zone again. And so we look at it from a different lens because yeah. we think that <clears throat> it shouldn't take as much energy to be successful in our love life as it does in other areas. Mm. And what I'm saying is the way that you program yourself in dating, right. then when you get to relationship, then that will roll over into marriage. It's always going to be effort. You don't get any sure. breaks from this. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think in hearing what you're saying and breaking it down, I feel like this is what it is. Someone, my best friend's mom said this to me. We were in uh, St. Bart's this I'm past, looking. yes, this past, uh, I forget, we went in May, June. She said something to me and it never hit, nothing has ever hit me like that did. We were sitting down, we were talking. I was telling her about somebody that I was dating and it recently ended. Um, and she said, Connor, you know something that I love, but I hate about you. And I'm like, geez, <laughs> I'm, like, what? I'm like, what? And she was like, I hate that in order for you to walk away from these men that you're, that you date, that you're in, you know, I'm not going to say full on relationships, but that I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. She said, you basically like have to get beat down. Like mm -hmm. they have to run you over with a car and do you wrong in the worst way for you to walk away. Mm -hmm. And I really sat there for a minute and I'm like, oh my God, you're right. And she's right. So I say that in relation to what you're saying, because I feel like with the men that I have dated, they've been emotionally unavailable men. Mm -hmm. So in my mind as an Aries, I'm like, oh, this is a chase. I'm going to make you love me. I'm going to make you want me. I'm going to show you how much of a good woman I am. I'm going to make you choose me. And in turn, they were the same person from the beginning. They mm -hmm. told me, they showed me what it was, but that uh, chase mentality in me was like, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. And I end up getting hurt. It's like the effort that I then put in to those situations, which was like an ego blow because it ended up not working out is why I'm like, I have nothing more in me. You know what? Y'all got to pursue me. You have to court me. But it's been that, that emotionally unavailable. And I never, when I see a red flag with a man, when I look back, like over my last, the last three men that I've dated, the red flags were in there, were there in the beginning. But because of how I am as a woman, I couldn't just say, oh, you know what? I see the red flag. Let me leave now, which is what someone with logical sense would do. But instead, it was my emotions of, no, I'm going to make him want me. And I stay and I get her. And it's like this cycle. And they basically have to like do something that if I were to tell you how it ended with the last three men, it's like how are you sitting here on this couch and smiling and okay, but it's just, you know, I, I'm a fighter. I'm a miss one knock down. I'm, I'm, I'm alive. I'm okay to the next, but now it's like, I don't have as much to give because I'm tired. Oh, I feel like that's you know? a lot of people. Like I understand that. Yeah. I understand that yeah. we, we want to tap out. Okay? Yeah. Cause we're like, look, I'm down for the count. This, I can't take any more pain. Yeah. I can't experience this anymore. Yeah. Cause I devoted time chasing emotionally unavailable men. For sure. And, <laughs> but the operative word that you're using is like chasing. You keep using this word chasing, you're right. chasing, chasing. You're right. You're right. If you are chasing something, absolutely. You're going to be run down and tired. Right. But if you can recognize that about yourself and say, okay, what does it look like when I don't chase? What does it look like when I am sitting in my feminine right. and allowing, right? right? I right. get that you set up like, and I'm telling you, um, take initiative and just like communicating interests. Yeah. But then we sit back, we fall back and we sit in our feminine yes. and we let the masculine come to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. We let them do, we let them show up. We allow them to court. Mm -hmm. If we are aware that sometimes we overdo it and we do too much, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean don't do anything because that's extreme. But what it should look like is he takes a step yes. and then you take a step. Yes. He takes a step. I'm more cautious. And then you take a step. Yeah. But not operating from a place of being cautious because I still feel like that is a fearful word. I feel like that's still mm. like a 
um, fear mindset around like, is this person going to hurt me? Is this person going to hurt me? Mm, like, mm -hmm. is this too good to be true? Is he going to take advantage right, of me? Right, right. You're still yeah. operating from that place and you're doing from that place versus I'm going to be the best me possible mm -hmm. and I'm not going to overdo it because he hasn't earned it. I'm going to give mm -hmm. him what he's earned thus far. Right. If he doesn't appreciate it and reciprocate, I'm out. And it's that simple. Okay. It's, it's literally yeah. that simple. Yeah. I, if there's no reciprocity here. Yeah. I'm gone. Yes. But you being addicted to the proving yourself right. It's yeah. not even so much about like, oh, I need to prove to him. Cause yeah. It, 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 we get caught up in this. I want to prove my worth thing. Yeah. But truly you want to prove to yourself that you're lovable. You're trying to prove yeah. to yourself that you are, you know, worth someone fighting for and trying to prove to yourself that like you can have the ability to change someone's mind right. about how they view you or how they see you. And the truth of the matter is, is they're just not qualified. Right. They're underqualified. They're not it. Yeah, they're just not it. I see that now. And it, it's unfortunate that, you know, it's one of those things that, yes, I went through it. And now I learned and I see it and I'm aware. But, you know, everything in life has its trade-off. And unfortunately, my trade-off with devoting my time in those wrong situations has now been my time. Yep. Something we can never get back. Which you are still... <clears throat> Young oh, as hell. Sure. Like, let's oh my not gosh. Get oh my, I am young. Like, Maybe I'm 21. <laughs> I don't know what. What did we say? No, I'm 21. I'm just kidding. But look at like the idea that, um, damn, now I'm in my 30s and I own my own home and I run my own business and I can't believe I don't have a partner. That's not the words and the language that is going to land you your partner. Mm. So in saying this, I want you to start to operate from a place of absolute gratitude and okay. where you're at. Okay. And then when you have conversations with yourself, it looks like speaking him into existence while you were in the place and position that you're in. Okay. okay. So first you're going to give me um, five reasons that you are grateful that you're a homeowner. Okay. Five reasons. Um, because I don't have, <laughs> I don't have to listen to my loud neighbors walking over me, the banging. Okay. Um, I get to, uh, pull up every day to a garage where I park my car safely away mm -hmm. from other cars. Um, I get to have a space where my mailbox won't get broken into because it's now in a secure location. Um, I'm in now a new area where now I get to meet my neighbors, new people, new, I love going to the grocery store. Like that is my thing. So I'm excited to like go and see, Oh, Okay, who are my neighbors and at who shops where I shop? And um, I have a space that's in my name. Mm -hmm. Like this is, I mean, besides my car, mm -hmm. but like I have something or that's mine. <laughs> I mean, right. You're right. You're right. But a piece of property yeah. now that is in my name. Yeah. Yeah. That nobody can take away. Like. No one can Oh, take that's away. what you meant by space. You meant location. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. That's no, what I, I was thinking like stuff in your name. No, no, like, no, no, no. Stuff no, in your name. No. But you're right. You have yeah. a, a, a actual piece of land that is like that's yours. Under Connor Morgan Huff. Like, yeah. That's huge. So you gave me like five things that you're grateful for when it uh -huh. comes to the home ownership. Yep. Okay. Now you're going to tell me oh, gosh. five things that you're grateful for because you're a homeowner to share with him. With my husband. What are you going to bring to his life having been a homeowner now you made this decision i'm gonna buy yes. a house i'm not gonna wait for a man to share in this accolade or this milestone because right. home ownership is a huge milestone it's especially huge. in la i got some listeners oh that my don't gosh. live in yeah. california let's be clear and in la y'all don't understand how yeah. hard it is to become it goes a up here, like you know? 10 points yeah because we did in la i'm sorry i'm just going to say that. <laughs> um i now in preparing this space of what I'm grateful for when I share this with my husband, I know how to take care of a home. Like I know how to, I don't know. I'll probably have cleaners. I'm not going to lie, but still like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we say I'm grateful to be able to, to know how to maintain, yeah, and run maintain a household, um, manage a household for my partner. Yes. I know how to decorate this space. And when I move into a bigger house with my husband and more rooms for our kids, I know how to like manage that part. Um, what else? I'm not going to be doing the gardening. Gotta know. 
I will be doing the herb part. I'm going to have my little herb garden, but mowing the grass, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Okay. So maybe um, you're grateful to give your husband fresh herbs from yes, the herb garden. Yes. And fruit and veggies that are like homegrown. Oh, babe, you're sick. Let me go pick some echinacea or, you know, like that's always, I think about that all the time. I'm like grateful to give my partner homegrown yes, remedies. Yes. Yes. Um, how many is that? That's two. That was like three, friend. No, three. you're throwing on like larger descriptions. <laughs> oh for the my same, gosh! For the okay, same okay. Thing. You said furnishing the home, but that's the same thing furnishing, as like okay, cleaning. Okay, yeah. Um, what else? Am I grateful? I'll give you. I'll give you that one. That's okay. three. So I'll give you okay. um, house management. Yeah. Uh, sitting in your feminine because I think that is very feminine to be able to decorate and yeah. cre- get creative. Yeah. And then gardening and like supplying him with yeah, nourishing food. With, yes. For so him those and are my three. Children and our children. And um, what else? In the home? I don't know. I do. So you 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 do know and you have to okay. push because you haven't been for since you bought the house in the mindset of um what is this teaching me and what am I going to what is this preparing prepare me, me for with my, my partner? Husband. There's a reason why it's happened in this order. Yes. And while it wasn't what yes. you expected, that doesn't mean that God's not using this experience for you in a different way. I know how to go through the process of the buying a home, like the credit checks, the what you have to supply, what you need in order to buy a home. Like I now went through that. So then when it is time and this is either going to be like our vacation rental or, you know, we Airbnb it out yeah. or we rent it, whatever. I now can do that without needing him fully to help with that part. You can contribute. Yeah, insight. I can contribute. Yeah. Yes, I can contribute. Um, One more. And I'm grateful for. I am grateful for. Having a bigger kitchen to prepare me and <laughs> <laughs> to prepare cooking because that's something I love doing. Yeah, you're yeah. Really a good lot cook. of the the funny thing is a lot of people don't know that I love to cook, but I just don't cook that much. A lot of people don't know how domestic you are. I know you are. Hella they have domestic. no idea. But again, it's because you only see the single Connor. They don't know how I am in a relationship. And the kicker is you it's, enjoy it. Oh, I love I it. I hate Oh my that God, crap. I love it. Babe, what you need? Like, I'm not going to say I, like I'm my husband's servant, but like in relationships, I love to cater to my man. For sure. Oh my God, I love that. The cook, the clean, the babe, you need a foot rub, you tired, what can I, like that is where I excel. Yeah. I love it. So I would say, yeah, to have to a bigger kitchen to prepare um, of like what, what it's going to be like. Yeah, for him. new recipes for my husband and for my children for whatever they like because I can make more than vegan stuff. So beautiful. Yeah. So the next step would be after you just gave me those five, mm. we would then read that mess every freaking morning. Mm. Okay. Because right now you've been making um, pr- pretty much uh, negative affirmations mm. about this huge accolade You're that right. you just accomplished. I have. So I have in been. order to get rid of those negatives, we now have to pour in some positives okay. because they need to override the negative energy and frequency that you've been on. Okay? okay. So every day you would need to say those five things in the morning so that one, you can even appreciate and celebrate the house and not walk into the home and be like, uh, where's my man at? Where's my man at? No, I don't do that now where I live. But I live by myself and I've lived alone. And I don't walk in and say, Ugh. <laughs> like, look, sweetie, I don't Am do I that. Am I putting dubs on it? I'm yeah, putting dubs she on put, it. you put a little extra. I might walk in. It might hit me every blue moon. Like, man. But it's more of like, I can't wait until I see my husband coming down the stairs or and, my kids running down the stairs. The energy I say that. It needs to be yeah, on. I say that. Um, what you're looking forward to, not what you're yes, without. What I'm lacking, for sure. I, I so agree. So even when people congratulate you, it's going to yes. look like, girl, and I'm so grateful that I'm going to be able to teach my man how to yeah. buy a home um, yeah. with me when we get our bigger house. And I'm so grateful to learn these new recipes and for my garden mm-hmm. and, you know, that I could um, pull into my garage uh, and, you know, feel safe and secure. But, you know, my man's going to be strapped. Yeah. He's going to make me feel safe and secure, <laughs> too. Right. And, You're right. And while it may not look like you walking into the house and moping. Um, I don't think that they were, were that bad. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just being extra with it. Okay. But I do think that in order for us to manifest the outcome that you truly desire and that your heart desires, we have to say those words. Okay. For sure. Then we take it a step further 
And the person who believes those things that they're saying, the person who believes that they're going to garden, the person who believes that they're going to grocery store shop mm -hmm. and, you know, kick in their new kitchen, new recipes. And the person who believes that they're going to give the, their kids these new garden nourishment. I don't know, herbs. That's all your language. Yeah, that's um, me. That's <laughs> all me. Which herb you need? I got you. <laughs> the person who believes that now has to behave that way. So... If I believe that that's going to happen, if I believe that these things are going to be true mm -hmm. of the life that I'm creating for myself and it's right. coming very soon, how do we prepare for that? Tell me what we could be doing this to prepare me on for the that, spot. to prepare for that, but also to <sighs> manifest that. There has to be some behavioral shifts that you have to do in order to acquire that. Well, I, I, I cook. I cook now. Okay. What else? Um, we're missing <laughs> the meeting a man part. <laughs> That's kind of a big piece. Madi wants me to be on dating sites and DMing men. I don't like, I just don't I see want, a world where this I happens. want you going places. I want you on <sighs> social. I want you um, on apps. I want you telling friends. I want you. Um, well, my friends, everybody knows. It's like. Okay. <laughs> you, everybody knows. We know that you're single. But Am I single? Have you asked me? But are you in a relationship right now? No. <laughs> I'm okay. just making sure you didn't ask. Okay. I could be dating. I was dating. I was dating. That's good. Okay. But what I'm saying is that we actively play a role in yes. our love life. You should be doing one thing a day in order to get One closer. thing a day? One thing a day. If I told you that I want to get a six pack, but I only work out once a week, um, what would you tell me? Yeah, you're not working hard enough. Okay. Or you're just not putting in maybe the effort or energy because when we use required. the word work, it sounds yes. painful. Okay. okay? But if I can learn to love and enjoy the process of working yes. out and what it does for me, and if I can see the positive side of it, I can start to little bit by little bit take baby steps to get me there to get my body in shape. Okay. okay? So when it comes to dating and relationship, if I'm just doing one thing a week in order to manifest this desire of my heart, less likely to happen mm -hmm. than if I do something <laughs> daily consistent. I'm not even doing one thing a week. And this is why when we say I just feel like, like I'm gonna, this is you not know? the life I imagined. <laughs> it's because. This is exactly what I you know. manifested. I know. What? Well, okay. First off, I didn't manifest it. Well. It just happened. I do, so I don't believe it just happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some accountability in there right there. Okay. Your life doesn't just happen. It's the choices that we make. Choice after choice after choice after choice. Okay. So just like you can manifest positive things in preparation for alliance and for uh, you for it to happen, right? Because it mm. has to be two things. Timing and space has to be those two things that have to be right. And when it shows up in front of you, you have to recognize it. Okay. So yeah, so this is why preparation is key. Okay. If we have been been preparing and putting our energy in a healthy way towards creating a healthy dynamic, and what I mean by like that is isolation is not healthy <laughs> dynamic to meet your husband. I told you something as simple uh, last year as, well, when you're um, jogging in the park with your dog, just smile at some men just so that you can get in the vibration. Right, and the problem was I didn't go jogging nice with men. my dog. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem was you didn't take my advice, and you also were like, ah, smile at men? Hell no. No, I smile at men. Let me tell you, I smiled at a man in the grocery store last week. Good and job. It, when I tell you I thought about this moment, I'm like, why didn't I speak to him? He... I really felt like he was, well, first off, I didn't know him to say he was a male version of me, but what was in his cart, it was like we were meant for one another. And then he had a little bomb Tesla. It was like wrapped in a matte gray. Okay. And he was tall, this tall white guy with like long hair and a ponytail. Mm. Cause you know, I like white men. Tapping too. into your Italian yes. side. People okay. People think I only date black men. Absolutely not true. And I was like, why didn't I speak to him? But then I'm like, well, if he was interested or if he found me attractive, he would have said hello and he didn't. So you out like, we were, Yes. He, we were making eye contact and smiling. And I was looking at his cart like, oh my gosh, we could totally have a bomb dinner together. And then I left the grocery store really kicking myself. That could have been him. And we just drove off. So what mistake did we make in there? That I didn't say hello. I was so nervous. Me nervous? Because I even get you nervous. had interest in him. Yeah. That if anyone who's listening to the beginning of this podcast, I started off with saying <laughs> when she's interested in someone, she does not speak. Yeah. So oh my God. I got nervous. Part of the problem right there. But I smiled. So she smiled back. let me give you your uh, flowers for smiling because okay. that's growth. Yeah. From last I time like when I asked you, you were like, I'm not smiling at a man. 
Um, Did I say that? <laughs> yes. I oh, have wow. it recorded. I have receipts. Okay. I will be posting to IG later. <laughs> um, the actual video where you're like, I'm not speaking to them. I don't think this I'm is true, smiling. y'all. I don't know if I said that. I think I said, if I'm not attracted to him, why would I smile That's at him? That's not what you said. I okay. have receipts, y'all. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. I'm, 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 I'm going to make sure okay. I post that when I, we post I this cannot. episode. Uh, but so that we've come a long way. We're smiling now. Yes. Th- that's the first one. Now and you've got Whole Foods. <laughs> Whole oh Foods. Gosh. So one of the exercises was Ugh. very interesting that we did was you writing that um, remember you would meet him in the grocery store while you're shopping. That's for why I'm your so organic mad food. that I didn't say hello. So <sighs> Mrs. Church Girl, who was raised by a pastor, PK. I'm a PK, y'all. What does the Bible say about okay. ask and I you shall receive? Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. What did we not do? All of that. <laughs> Nada. <laughs> Every last one. So oh we can't gosh. say that like I didn't have anything to do with where I'm at now. Like, no, when you put your mind to something, I only see you accomplish. When you That's go true. for whatever you want, That's I've true. never seen you fail. That's you could true. get um, knocked down a few times. I always see you getting back up. This is true, So y'all. to not apply that same, like, logic or even, like, you know, just I desire. Know. It's very unlike Connor. Move. Yeah. It's it's what you and a lot of people, we, we psych ourselves out. We think that, well, relationship is different. It's so much more personal than the yeah. other, you know, areas of my life. And the truth of the matter is, it's because you're, you're compartmentalizing it differently. And you're thinking that you have to be a different person in this area to get what you want. Yeah. So there's a conflict between who you truly are and how you operate. Mm. And so because you're not being true to yourself, which is being the life of the party, yeah. bubbly, very charismatic, yeah. you aren't <laughs> allowing for him to see your full light. You dimmed yourself in the grocery store. But you know, in the past, and again, you're right, this isn't how it should be. But in my past relationships, I have been taught or molded into to dim my light. I'm never able to be Connor the star that shines bright. I've never been able to be that because it has been too much for the men I've dated. It's been, you're too friendly. You're too this. You work too much. You have no time for me. You this, you that. So I've, I've with men, I have had to shrink. I have had to dim. Mm -hmm. So in that moment of like, I dimmed probably out of what I knew, which was, I am never able to be my truest self. There's only been one man I've ever been able to be my true self with. And that's, he's my best guy friend. And we always say, is it going to be us? It's not. Oh, okay. It's not. No, because he already (laughs) has two. That's a whole nother talk. But anyways, um, he's the only person. I have to be Connor, the soft-spoken, the quiet, the... But that's not your natural essence. I know. I know. You were operating from your wounded feminine. And that is messing you up right now. Yeah. So I say this to say that... Had you spoken to him, all you literally had to do, you didn't have to say like, hey, I'm Connor. Can I take you to dinner tomorrow? I'm not telling you to court him. Yeah. I'm saying all you had to say is, I like what's in your car. Oh, my God. All you had to say, I like what's in your car. Madi, his, our carts were like (laughs) twins. I'm like looking at him. I'm like, is this real life? This man, he looked like a Brad Pitt, but tall Oh my God. Where was the flirtation? Where was the, so what are you making for me with all these ingredients? I don't, I got. Or you got dinner, I got dessert. What's up? <laughs> if we want to be a little bit more aggressive, I'm know, just saying. If you want to, that would have been something Mari would have done. Yeah, Spicy would have done that. <laughs> That's what I, I would have like, done. I was like, oh my God, please say something, please something. And then he got behind me in the lane and I'm like, pull up next to me, please, before. And then I ended up making the light and then he ended up going right. And I'm like, and he lived in Toluca Lake. I'm like, this was it. In my mind, I already created a whole story that, you know, who knows. But yeah, you're right. So if we could do that differently, right? Because the opportunity is going to come back up. For sure. What will we do differently? When we made eye contact and when we smiled, I should have like brought something up that was in his cart. Like, oh, you like that? Or something about his cart. Like something personable that we could talk about and that would have led somewhere and then see where... If he then, I gave a little, see if he would have given a little. And we got through to her today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. I took a step and then he took yes. a step. Ah, yes. This is how yes. it works. 
Yes. And look, worst case scenario, he tells you like, oh, you know, um, I got a girl or, you know. I look for the wedding ring because at this age. He could have done that. You look for the car seats in the car. You look for the running ring. But yeah. we strengthen the muscle. Even if he says, I got a woman, or maybe yeah. we find out that he's not, you know, playing for the same team. Yeah. Perfectly fine. <laughs> right. we're, stre- we're sharpening a muscle. We're yeah. sharpening yeah. A, a tool in our toolbox mm-hmm. so that we can start to make conversation and get our needs met when it comes to connection, when it comes sure. to just making it easier on ourselves to connect with men. And I'm not saying that um, it has to shift overnight. But based on what you tell me that your goals are and based on what you tell me that you want, I need to see actionable changes yeah. that are going to help you get one step closer. If you're not doing any steps in that area, I got to call I know, BS but this is you. why I ha- I'm going to... We, we got to do the program. Yeah, I'm redoing her program, y'all, because the first time I did it, I was dealing with somebody, so I didn't dive in like mm-hmm. I should. And that was why I was hesitant to do... Go on dates, do the dating profile, but I wasn't honest with you about that. I'm yep. admitting she that. Was, she went through the program dishonest. Yeah, I was, but at least I'm honest about it now. And You so, thought you were going to skate the system and be like, oh, I don't have to tell her everything. I don't have yeah. to be transparent and I can keep this little side cheeky boom boom and I'll still get, <laughs> I'll eventually get my husband. Yeah. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't that. work like that. I know. <laughs> I know. But I know that now. So I'm ready to dive in when we do. A couple months. We're going to start top of the year and, you know. If I have that, like, okay, someone on me, I know I'll do my homework. Which yeah, accountability partner. Yeah, for sure. And That's I'm going to yank be. your tail when it's time to walk away sooner than later. If if he's not in alignment with, if, if he's not the person that belongs in that house or in the home that you're buying, or if he's not deserving of those homegrown vegetables, for sure. we move on to the next. Yeah. Okay. But I am able to see that now. Like it took, it wasn't, like I said, until my best friend's mom brought that up and it hit me like a sack so of So true. And I'm like, oh You got to be my dogged gosh. out in order like, to let somebody Like somebody has to dog me, dog me. And it's terrible. It is so bad. Like I walked away, I walk away like <laughs> wounded. Beaten up, beaten up. Yeah, be- broken. Like, and we got to put the pieces back together yeah, each time. On my own. Yep. And that's the hardest part. But I see it now. When she said that, I'm like, wow. I wrote a list and I'm like, she is right. So anyways, thank you, Angela. I love you. <laughs> Shout out to Angela for whatever it is yes, that you said. That, Angela, that we love you. My her. second mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So we're wrapping up in just a sec. I want you to share a little bit about um, Bare Root and your book because yes. they need to know um, how you came up with this like phenomenal product and why we need it in our lives. Okay. So what Bare do you Root. need to talk about first? Yeah, the Bare Root. How did okay. this speak to you? How did you know the world needed this? Can, can they see this on the thing or do I need to lift, lift it up? It? Okay. So y'all, these are just, I have... So many products, a plethora. Check it out, bearrootremedy.com. Um, I started Bear Root in COVID. So when quarantine happened, as terrible as it was, it was amazing for me and a lot of other people yeah. because it pushed us to what I feel like this is my purpose. Yep. Until I have kids, when I feel like my purpose is to be a mom, which I feel like it is, this is my purpose, right? This is my baby right now. Um, I was a flight attendant. I worked on private jets for like seven years. And when COVID happened, I couldn't fly. Like the world shut down. Mm -hmm. Like many others, the world, it just stopped. My job stopped. So it was when I was sitting around, I'm on Amazon, I'm buying products. And I'm like, every time I post something that I buy and I talk about it and why I love this product or why I use it, I have so many people sending me screenshots. Connor, I bought what you posted. Connor, I bought this. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not getting paid for (laughs) promoting and putting on these products from people. Why would I not start my own line of products that I believe in, products that I use, of herbs that I, you know, I learned when I studied herbalism and whatnot. And so that's where Bear Root Remedy came from. It's a everything vegan, organic, holistic. It's about healing your body from the inside out. It's not just uh, about taking the right supplements. Mm. It's about your mindset. It's about what you consume, what we're reading, what we're watching. It's everything. Yeah. If you want to heal on the outside, you want good skin. It's not just about topical products you're putting on. It's about everything you are putting inside your body. And that is what Beru is all about. So you have some of my products. Have yes. you been, what do you uh, use? The, I've what been do you using like? the chlorophyll. Okay, good. Um, and that was something that like I never take. But when you gave it to yes. me, I was like, okay, let me try this. And I felt like... Okay, it gave me like a burst of energy. Uh-huh. I felt like it I was skin. detoxing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a natural deodorizer. So any, if a woman comes to me and she's like, I have problem with, you know, just BO or something anything. like that. Yeah, chlorophyll. Uh, I don't have go-to. it on me right now, but yeah, chlorophyll, like 
takes away any type of scent at all that you have. It's incredible. And I think for me, it's what why my skin is so clear. Um, yeah, your skin looks flawless. Thanks, girl. Yes. So yeah, these are, again, so, just some of the products I have on me. This is a probiotic. You have my probiotic? I don't have the probiotic. Okay, I need I'm going to give you the, Yeah, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to give this to you because I always I say every woman- I need to get woman, all my stuff back in order after the baby. <laughs> yes. If you take nothing else, as women, we need probiotics. You know, the good and bad bacteria. Yep. It balances you out, so I'll give that to you. Um, Women's Harmony, you do have this. This helps balance your hormones. So if someone suffers from PCOS or just bad period cramps, yep. y'all need this. For and then sure. this is a liquid B12. And as someone who is mostly vegan, um, you lack the vitamin B12, which is in a lot of red meat. I and need stuff. that you don't one have too. This? No, I need the B12. I'll give, yeah, I'll give this to you. You put okay. me on B12. I didn't even know what B12 was until like, you. So many people are like, they get headaches. They're tired all the time. They don't realize they are B12 deficient. As a new mom, I know that like yes. it's partially like me having to multitask but yeah. also not having probably the balance you know supplements in my for body sure. that I need for sure yeah so again all of these products um everything is natural everything like my farm that these herbs grow on it's in New Mexico like everything is certified I wanted this to be products that were stuff that I already was buying and that mm. I believe in and use and just stuff that I wanted to come out with, but I didn't want there to be all those additives and yeah. fillers and extra stuff that we don't need in products. And so that's why I created Bear Root Remedy because the root is in the remedy. So Oh, that makes it the root is in the yeah, remedy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. The remedy's in the root. Did the I say remedy's in the root. Yeah, the remedy is in the root. Okay, so Get the it? solution is yes, in the, the root. The solution like, is in the root. Got it. Like the, the root of the, the herb, root. the root of the like because it could also work the other way too could like, it at the, the root, root of oh, it yeah, the root it could at go the root both of it, ways yeah it, it could go both, both ways. ways yeah it, yeah, does. it could go both ways so <laughs> you're right you're right okay but, and then the book you yes. gotta tell me about the book yes we, i'm so proud you're a published author you gotta i've been trying to write my book for a while i'm gonna need you to like yes, toss i'll me give some, you my publisher yep this is my book do you have my book no i need that as well okay so i'm gonna have to sign this because i sign any copy that you get from my website i sign um this book is special i wrote it also during quarantine a lot of stuff came out of quarantine. Listen, yeah. because for me, you know me. One week you could call me, I'm in Africa. The next I'm in Brazil. Right. I'm I don't know always, when I'm going to catch you. I'm on the go, I'm on the go. But I couldn't go I was anywhere. lucky to have you come to Princeton's uh, birthday. I know. I was like, oh, what a blessing. You were in town for the first yeah, time. <laughs> no, literally. I know. Once I bought the house, I'm like, okay. Life got real. I need to sit we need for a chill. minute. Let's chill. Um, but yeah, I wrote this during, well, I started writing it way before. I had little notes here on post-its, little notes here and there. And I just started writing a book to my younger self. Um, what I want, what I wanted Connor to know when she was in her 20s that I know now and like life lessons that unfortunately I had to go through the hard way in order to know what mm. I know now. So the book is called If You Only Knew. Um, it's what I wish I knew in my twenties, how to not mess up your twenties. Um, baby, because the twenties, I are didn't messy. mess my twenties up. Let's be clear. Twenties <laughs> are messy though. That's when you the like, make all are your mistakes. Messy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're able to make your mistakes. But like, if I'm talking to younger Connor, if I'm talking to my younger sisters, if I'm talking to anyone out there who's in their twenties, you could be also a 15 year old and read this book. You yeah. could be in your forties and read it. It's not just for your 20s, but it's a, a letter to my younger self. And each chapter focuses on a lesson that I went through. There's eight chapters and it's sold on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and um, a lot of other online bookstores, like a plethora. So you just Google it. I love it. I'm there. so proud of you. That's Thank good. This you. is like a, a, something that you needed to do for yourself, but then now you're yes. doing it to the world. I literally, it was a letter to me, but I, I Googled. There were so many, a letter to my younger self yeah. that I, I had to think of something else. But that's what the book is based around. If I'm talking to me in another life, but to my younger self. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I'm yeah. so proud of you. Thank and you. I'm proud of the love that is Thank on its you. way to you. Me too. It's coming. It is definitely me coming. Me too. Okay, so let everybody know um, the <laughs> websites again, where to find you, uh, social, and where to buy any of your products. Yes. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Connor Morgan, and it's spelled C-O-N-N-O-R, and then Morgan, at Connor Morgan. Um, you can get my book and also Bare Root Remedy products at www.barerootremedy.com. And I believe that's it. I keep it simple. We got my website, barerootremedy.com, hey. and we got my Instagram, Connor Morgan. So. Good stuff. Yeah. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at SpicyMati. Go to thespicylife.com, schedule a free consultation. Also, uh, click and subscribe to the Spicy Life podcast. Share it with a friend, download it, pass it along. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.